All right, while I'm at it, um, doing all these video presentations and screencasts and things like that, I figured I might as well cover a topic on screencasting, even though I cover video ex extensively at linuxintro.com. Um, I don't really cover how I actually make the screencast. I always used this little program here called uh, Istanbul, and because that was originally when I very first started experimenting with screencasting, that was the only one that actually uh, worked consistently. Um, there was other ones such as GTK Record My Desktop and uh, an XVID uh, desktop uh, screen recorder. And also you have the command line uh, FFmpeg which can record your desktop session. Um, a lot of things have evidently changed as GTK Record My Desktop is a lot more stable, a lot more reliable now and Istanbul Desktop Session Recorder uh, has fallen way to the back. Now, with we'll go ahead and start Istanbul even though I won't use it, I'll just open it. You get this little red dot here to start recording. If you right click you get a context menu where you can select the area of the screen you want to record or select a window by clicking on a window. Uh, if you select an area to record, you get the option to create a little rectangle like this. And it will only record in that rectangle throughout the duration of all your recordings unless you change it or uh, exit and re-enter, uh, reopen it. If you select a window, you get this little crosshair target and you just click on a window. Um, and you got the option to record 3D, such as 3D games and stuff like that. But I doubt the quality is going to be very good because that's very CPU intensive. Uh, you get the option to record your mouse pointer and the option to record sound. I have not had good experiences trying to record sound with any of these until na until now. Uh, what I had been doing is opening Audacity and recording the sound uh, in Audacity while I record the video with Istanbul and then muxing them together with MKV Merge and transcoding them with M Encoder. Um, and you get the option to record your screen or your capture area at full size, quarter width, half width. Um, the, the thing is, you don't have quality options with Istanbul. It's a set quality. It exports to AUG, and so you have to be able to transcode AUG by hand. You can't drop AUG uh, files into programs such as AVID MUX uh, right there because it can't recognize or work with AUG files, so you have to be able to transcode it from the command line. Um, which is fine and dandy for me, but uh, not for less experienced users. Now, I have recently been frustrated with the quality of my screencast. You can't make out a lot of the text, and uh, even when the text isn't important, you just need to see pretty much what I'm doing. Even then, it's kind of blurry. Um, and I've been experimenting with some other ones again, and this GTK Record My Desktop, which is what I'm using right now, and that's what you see right here. I'll, let's see if I can open up two instances. Okay, yeah. With GTK Record My Desktop, you've got several options. Uh, your default options right here, video quality and sound quality, and you can uncheck this box to, to disable the recording of sound. Um, you got the option to click this uh, little select in box to select a window target um, and tell it what file, where you want it to save the resulting file at. Uh, if you click Advanced, you go into the advanced menu. Uh, this working directory is pretty much the default directory it will save files to. Um, I just ch chose desktop. Performance, frames per second, you want about, depending on, if you're doing a standard ass screencast where you're just recording stuff like I'm doing right now, you really don't need more than 20 frames per second. However, I always use the PAL 25 frames per second format. Uh, encode on the fly, do not check that box because that's very CPU intensive to record and encode at the same time and it, it will affect the quality of the video. Zero compression means do not try to compress the video, leave it raw and uh, as big as it wants to be because later on you're going to transcode it into X264 or something like that. Quick subsampling, I have absolutely no... Uh, Requires less processing power, but it might make colors look a bit blurry. Okay, so you don't want that option if you care about quality. Full shots at every frame is where for every single frame it captures, it tries to capture the whole frame instead of, uh, I guess, the difference of ch uh, data and colors. Um, so check zero compression, full shots at every frame, 20 or 25 frames per second. For sound, it's kind of interesting. 
Uh, but channels, you only need one because your microphone for your computer's only got one channel. It's mono. Uh, device, if it works, leave it as default. I don't mess with any of this jack stuff. I've never had any good work, uh, good luck with that. The frequency, audio frequency, is uh, 22, 22,050 kilohertz by default. Um, now, I mix audio a lot of the times with my video and mux them together all into one presentation, and the, they, that requires the same sample rate. So I tried to increase the 22,050 up to the standard 44,100, 44,100 kilohertz. It was, it, I don't know what happens when you put it at a, uh, the standard 44,100 kilohertz, um, but it plays it really crappily and really fast like it speeds right through the audio uh when it transcodes it the audio will finish like in no time it's, you sound like alvin and the chipmunks uh so i wind up having to go up to forty-eight thousand kilohertz which is one of the higher standards for anybody that's familiar with audio editing you'll know that there are three standard frequencies uh there are the forty-eight thousand kilohertz frequency which is the highest normally um there is the forty-four thousand one hundred, which is the normal and it's good quality and then there's 22,050 which is l below normal but it's still decent quality and for screen capturing that's all you need but if you're going to be muxing audio together with it from uh, actual like music files and stuff like that other quality uh, audio files then you want it to be at least 44,100 um, unless all of your music file sample rates are 48,000 then change it accordingly. I actually have several little scripts I've written to resample videos in different ways and to transcode them in different ways with the click of a button and uh, so I can just like resample any audio, any video just by dropping it in a folder and clicking the button. Uh, it's my own little menus I made and scripts I wrote. Um, as you can see I've got a directory for standard um, uh, camcorder videos which are I, it's my little generic directory where it just it doesn't resize it doesn't do anything it just resamples the audio encodes it as AAC uh, and encodes the video as x264 but it doesn't resize it doesn't uh, scale it doesn't do nothing because you never know what camera you're bringing the video in from so it just leaves the resolution and everything else as is uh, and then my resample that's just to strip the audio out and resample the audio at a different frequency. Uh, in my case, it's I, I have it set to 44,100. So if I drop any file, a video file in there, it'll resample the audio at 44,100 kilohertz, strip it out of the audio uh, video file, and drop it uh, in the folder to where you can mux it back together with the video file and uncheck the option to include the old audio. Uh, special I have for doing special encoding, um, like when I've got to letterbox my videos and stuff like that. Speed up is when I do like screencasts of special effects and I speed it up uh, so it's more smooth. And standards, just my standard screencast, like the one I'm making right now when I'm done, I'll drop it in this folder and I'll just click on standard and it'll do a standard transcode uh, to my standard format. The rest of these are made to get things that are not in my standard format into the standard format so I can use them all together. Um, anyway, I kind of got off on a tangent there. Miscellaneous, I don't even mess with this. I'd leave it alone. Uh, but if you use Windows decorations or uh, special effects, you can leave that box checked. Uh, outline capture area on screen. Actually, I, I could uncheck that. That's, I see little, you probably won't see them, but I see little white lines going around the screen. Um, reset capture area. I'm not even sure what you'd need that for. But anyway, those are your advanced options. Video quality and sound quality.